Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, listen, uh, before we do the, the uh, uh, our official welcome and everything that we normally do, um, we're going to start out this morning with communion, and then we're going to go into prayer. And so, um, if you don't have communion elements, which is perfectly fine, um, um, just be in prayer with us as we take communion on your behalf uh, this week. Um, uh, and I want you to pray with your family. Pray with whoever you're watching this with. Pray whoever you are um, tuning in with. Uh, uh, we we got to get back to prayer. We got to get back to um, 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 truly praying with one another and praying for one another. Um, and so we're going to start out the service with that. And then um, we'll take communion and then we will uh, uh, then we will um, get into um, what I believe God has called um, for us on today. So um, if we can go ahead and get the elements. Then I want you to um, pray with your family. Go in prayer with your family right now. Then we'll take communion, or uh, 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 we'll go to, to, to the throne of grace for God for you on your behalf uh, uh, with the elements, and then we will um, uh, 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 move forward with that today. So right now, pray with your family, pray with those who, who you're watching and with, and if you're watching alone, just go into prayer right now. Go into prayer right now. We can give us a few moments, and we got to get back to. Prayer. The Bible says in Acts chapter 2, beginning at verse 42, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to fellowship, to breaking bread, and to prayer. And so I want you to pray. Um, I'm right, 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 right now. Father, we thank you for the grace that you, that, you, that you give us every single day of our lives. We thank you for uh, uh, just the mercy and the love and kindness. We thank you for um, just another opportunity to come together uh, with the body of believers to worship the one true king, to worship majesty, we thank you for everything that you're doing in our lives. We thank you for your love. We thank you for joy. We thank you for just your perfect peace. But most importantly, we thank you for the work that was done on the cross. So that way, uh, um, we can have access to the Father. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews that when Jesus died, the, per the, the, the veil was now torn. That means we now have access. We now have access to the Father. And we love you and we praise you. God, you are beautiful to us. You are perfect in all your ways. Everything you do is excellent. Everything you do is wonderful. Everything you do is grand. 
and we thank you for it. We, we, we ask you for forgiveness of our sin, our trespasses, our iniquities. That you forgive us for it right now, Father God. And Father, I thank you for forgiving us. Your word says that when we confess our sins, you are faithful and just. And so, Father, we thank you for um, not even bringing our past up, <laughs> our shortcomings. We love you and we praise you. Lord, we appreciate you. Father, as we get ready to take communion, we pray that everything that we do today is done in decent and in order. And it is acceptable in your sight. We love you and we pray just in Jesus' precious name we pray. And all God's people say, amen. amen. As we take the elements, we remember the work that was done on the cross so that we can have life. We thank you for everything, Father God. We thank you for the body of Jesus that was broken for us. Jesus said, um, um, take and eat, and often as you eat it, do it in remembrance of me. Let's eat together. And then he took the cup after supper, at supper, and he says, take this cup and drink, and as often as you drink it, do it in remembrance of me. Let's drink together. And we thank you, Jesus. We know that the work that you did on our behalf that we cannot even describe how much it means. And so we pray that what, we're, what we've done so far it is acceptable to you. We love you and we praise you. It's in Jesus' precious name we pray. And all God's people said, amen. Amen. Give your Jesus a hand clap. <laughs> all right, we want to welcome you. We want to welcome you to Full of Faith Bible Church, where our church mission is faith, faith building, building through Bible, Bible teaching for a living, teaching. growth, and discipleship. And we are a church that love loves God, God and loves people. Listen, we love you, we love you, we love you, and we appreciate you, um, um, your faithfulness, uh, uh, worshiping our Creator with us every single week. You can go, you can watch and tune or go to any church that you, across this world, across this nation, but faithfully at 11 o'clock on Sundays, you tune in to see what God is doing through FFBC. Um, and so we pray, we, we appreciate you, we pray for you daily. We thank you. Listen, if you're watching us and you have not done this, we want you to like our Facebook page and subscribe to the YouTube channel. And then we want you to hit the share button. Hit that share button and that helps get the gospel, get the word of God out all over the world. Uh, because you hit the share button and because you tag your friends uh, 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 and everything that we're doing, um, listen, we're able to reach people all over the world. We have family now in Canada. We have family now in Oklahoma. We have family now in, in uh, 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 California. We have family all over the great state of Texas. We have family everywhere. And so we appreciate your faithfulness. Listen, I need you to do me something huge now. Pray for your pastors. Pray for your leaders. Pray for your pastors. Pray for your leaders. We need prayer as well. I know I say this every single week, but I mean it every single week. Pastors are, are just like anyone else. Okay? We fall short. We need prayer. We go through things. We go through life. We need your prayers. The prayers of the righteous, man, helps lift us up up and so we thank you we thank you for your love listen we are grateful for what god is going to do today we are excited about what god is going to do today and we pray that you hope that i mean we pray and hope that you uh, um uh, uh those who are watching us online that you will um um praise god man like never before worship god like never before be thankful be grateful for what he has done but most importantly be grateful and thankful for who he is that he is lord of lords and he is king of kings we love you, and we appreciate your faithfulness. Father, we thank you for this great day, and we know and, and believe that you will be glorified in all that we do. We love you, and we pray this in Jesus' precious name we pray. And all God's people said, amen. Amen.
Good morning, good morning. We are so grateful to have you here with us on today. Let us just stand and honor God in his presence right where you are. Just get ready to worship him in spirit and in truth. How many of you know that there is no God like Jehovah? There is no God like him. He is the King of kings and Lord of lords. And he is deserving of all of our praise. We bless his name in this place. Come on. Jesus is keeping you. He's making a 
take your place that everything that goes forth people know that it's you if it's not me it's not the singing it's not the music it's not even the preaching but it's you take your place today your rightful place You are the head. We place you back in position where you belong. We love you and we praise you. It's in Jesus' precious name that we pray. And all God's people said, amen. amen. Listen, if you have your word, let's get right to the word today. Let's get right to the word. I thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let's get right to the word. Let's lift it high. Say, this is my Bible. This is my Bible. It is the true word of God. It is the true word of God. And I believe. And I believe. Every word in it. Every word in it. Simply because. Simply because. It's God's very breath. It's God's very breath. All right, let's go. Acts. Same place we were last week. Acts chapter 3. Acts chapter 3. And this time I'm going to read one verse. Well, I'm saying that. Let me, let me not say that. <laughs> Acts chapter 3. Yeah, I'm going to read a couple of verses. Sorry. Acts chapter 3, beginning at verse 6. Matter of fact, let me just start at verse 1. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> verse 1. The text says, Now Peter and John were going up to the temple for time of prayer at 3 in the afternoon. And the man who was lame from birth was being carried there. And he was placed each day at the, and he was placed, um, each day at the temple gate called Beautiful. So that he could beg from those who were entering the temple. And when he saw Peter and John about to enter the temple, he asked them for money. And Peter, along with John, looked straight at him and said, look at us. So he turned to them, expecting to get something from them. But Peter said, I don't have silver or gold, but what I do have, I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Get up and walk. Then taking him 
by the right hand, he raised him up. And at once his feet and his ankles became strong. Verse 8. So he jumped up and started to walk. And he, this is the key verse. And he entered the temple with them, walking, leaping, and praising God. And all the people who saw him walking and praising God, and they recognized that he was the one who used to sit and beg at the beautiful gate at the temple. So they were filled with awe and astonishment at what had happened to him. I want to continue this particular um, um, passage of scripture simply because it is time for the body of Christ and the world and the, uh, the nation and the world to understand that man, there is something about the name of Jesus. There is something about this man named Jesus. That, that, that's the old school song that's within me. There's something about a man named Jesus. And, and, and what I want you to understand is that there is, there is power in his name. There's power in the name of Jesus. There, there is, and, and, and according to the scripture, watch this, not only is there power in the name of Jesus, but there's healing in the name of Jesus, right? And it's time for the nation, it's time for the world, it's time for the body of Christ to remember who Jesus is. Because when adversity slaps us, when hard times hits us, we forget all about, it, about Jesus and we only focus on what we're going through. But man, what happens if the body of Christ begins to operate out of that same faith that we say we have? <laughs> what, what happens if the body of Christ begins to truly walk by faith and not by sight? What type of response does that send to, or what type of, 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 of display of action does that send towards heaven? When we truly begin to operate in faith and not operate out of fear, and not operate about what we see naturally, but to but truly begin of what we understand and know what we what we know is true spiritually. What I love about this text is that not only does it teach us uh, um, the, uh, that that the name of Jesus is powerful, but but it teaches us that man healing, oh, true healing. Watch this, true satisfaction and true healing only comes from him. Watch this. That, that, that we often seek the things that's only going to satisfy us temporarily. We, we only seek the things that's only going to get us by right now. And that's why in this text, this man was asking for something that he thought was going to make things better for him. The Bible says that he was out at the temple gate begging for money. Why? Because we live in a society where we feel money is going to solve everything. We, we live in an area or a, or a, uh, we have the mindset that, that money is what, what brings true happiness. That, that money is what brings success. Can I tell you something? Okay, I'm about to go here, and I don't want y'all to think, oh, he ain't no pastor no more, but I'm about to make reference to this. There was a rapper named Biggie, Biggie Small. Biggie says, more money, more problems. That's what Biggie said. And you can say, oh, he ain't no Christian. He, he talking about Biggie. I'm telling you what Biggie said. Biggie said, more money, more problems. And I see that because can I be honest with you? The more money we get, the more we can free, the more we think we can freely spend. And when we freely spend, we find ourselves in deeper and deeper situations. And what I love about this text is that Jesus' power is at full display. So let's look at this. This man from the very beginning has issues. He can't walk and he's broke. The Bible says that he's lame and that people had to carry him where he needed to be or where he wanted to be, or where he had a desire to be. So, so if you look at this man's life, you'd be like, man, why, God? What did this man do to deserve what he's going through? Why, why, why was he born lame? Why, why was he born lame? And then to add insult to injury, he ain't got no money. He's broke. So, so not only can he not walk, but he is now in a position to where he feel like he has to be. One thing I know 
that I've learned as a, as a believer in Jesus is I don't have all the answers. <laughs> I can tell you that. If somebody say, well, why does God allow these things? I don't have all the answers. And it would be foolish of me to try to uh, 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 make people think that I have all the answers. But one thing I do know is what the scripture says. The scripture says that sometimes God allowed things to happen truly for his glory. And in this scripture, what you're about to see is the glory of God be revealed. Because it's something that nobody can fix. It's something that money can fix, but only Jesus can. This man is at the temple. He's been dropped off at the gate. He's at the temple. And he's begging for money because he feels money is what's going to fix his problems. But what he didn't understand is that he just ran into the wrong two people. <laughs> he ran into some Bible-believing people. He ran into some, into some uh, people who truly believe in Jesus simply because they have personally walked with Jesus. They have seen miracle after miracle. They have seen God work in miraculous ways like nobody else can. Watch this. Not only have they seen the death be able to the death be able to hear, and not only have they seen sight being restored back to the blind, but they've seen Lazarus raised from the dead. And not only that, they walk with the Messiah. They walk with Jesus. Jesus has now resurrected from the grave and he's walked with them. He's talked with them. He's ate with them. He's fellowship with them. And so because uh, they have a personal experience or a personal relationship with Jesus, they can testify to the fact that, man, Jesus can heal you. Oh, watch this. I, I love this because when, when, when the lame man sees Peter and John, the first thing that they that he does is he begins to ask for money. Mm -hmm. Can you help me in my time of need? That's what he's asking. I'm, I'm, I'm broke. I have nothing. I have no money. I, I can't walk. Uh, um, so can you give me what I need that's going to satisfy me right now? I never forget this. I always relate life <laughs> because I, I had some I had some life learning experiences in Forest Hill, All right? I had some life learning experiences in Forest Hill, and I never forget me and my family was at um uh, Waterburger, and a young man that I that I personally know um um uh, uh, came to Waterburger, and it looked like life has just been hitting him. Right? Uh, uh, whether it's some decisions he has made that has gotten him in his position or whatever the case may be, um, um, life has hit him, has hit him, and he, he looks, um, 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 uh, he has the look of someone who truly needs some help. I'll put it to you that way. He has the look of someone who truly needs some help. And, and, and uh, my family <laughs> was looking at me like, or well, my kids were looking at me like, um, Daddy, why are you talking to him? He looks dangerous. He looks suspect. But to me, I don't look at him that way. I'm looking at, I know this young man. I'm having a conversation with this young man. I talk to this young man all the time. But to society, he looked like, oh, he's just about to beg for something. Or he's about to do something or to, uh, something worse. Right? So he comes into a water burger. All eyes turn to him. And I'm like, oh, my goodness. So I immediately begin to feel sorry for him. I'm like, dog, everybody begin to stare at him so you can already tell that they are already judging him, right? And so they come, uh, uh, they see him, and he sees me, and he says, uh, 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 man, I, I, I need some money. I'm hungry. And I already know. I know the game, right? I know what's what. I know what's happening. I said, you know what, man? I ain't got no money, but here's what I can do. You're hungry. I can buy you something to eat right now here at the place. And he didn't like that answer. Right? And because he didn't like the answer that I gave him, um, um, uh, 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 he, 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 he didn't have the, he, his, his whole attitude and his whole demeanor changed because he thought I was going to give him what he was seeking. He, he was seeking uh, uh, physical money, and I'm like, no, let me feed you to satisfy your hunger. 
right? Let me pay for your meal. And that's not what he, he didn't want the money for that reason. I love this text because this man goes to Peter and John and says, uh, do you have some money for me? They, he began to beg for money. And when they gave him a reply or response, they said, look at us. He looked at them as if they was going to, oh, I'm finally going to give some, get some money from somebody. And, he, and they looked at him and said, listen, silver and gold we do not have. I, I don't have the money that you're seeking. But what I have is ten times better than what you thought you were going to get. Oh, man. What, what I have for you is ten times better than silver and gold. You know, I heard a pastor say this, and it really broke my heart. It broke my heart when I heard a pastor say this. A pastor was making a reference to Kirk Franklin's song and says, uh, you know, Kirk Franklin's song, Silver and Gold. Uh, I'd rather have Jesus than Silver and Gold. I heard a pastor say this out of his mouth, says, uh, that ain't biblical. <laughs> we need money. And I'm just like, oh, brother, you done lost me. <laughs> no. That pastor said, was talking about Kirk Franklin's song, Silver and Gold. Said, I'd rather have Jesus than Silver and Gold. He said, that's wrong. That's not Bible. That's not biblical. We need money. And I'm like, Pastor, no. <laughs> Don't say that. John and Peter, John and, 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 uh, Peter said, we don't have the money that you're seeking. But what we do have, we give to you because this is what's better. This is what's going to make your life better. This is what's going to help you. This is what's going to save you. This is what's going to change your life forever. And what we have, we freely give to you. We give to you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Stand up and walk. And the Bible says this. That take, verse 7, and taking him by the right hand, he raised him up, and at once his feet and his ankles became strong. John and Peter tells him, the silver and the gold, the money, is not, is not what's going to help you right now. What you need right now is Jesus. <laughs> yeah. The things that you're thinking is going to bring you satisfaction right now. Can I tell you something? That's not going to help you. What you need is Jesus. The very things that you think is going to help restore or make better or make new is not what's going to restore and make better and make new. What you need is Jesus. The very thing or the very people that you think is going to always have your back and going to always be in your corner, the moment you ain't there, or the moment it seems like you're not there for them, they'll turn their back on you. That ain't what you need. What you need is Jesus. Jesus is the answer for everything. And that's what Peter and John is telling this man. I don't have the money that you're seeking, but the healing that you need ain't going to come from the finances. What it's going to come from is Jesus. And what we got to do, and I, I pray that the body of Christ does this, I pray that the nation does this, is turn back to Jesus. Because that's who we need in order for things to get better. And the Bible says this, that when he took them by the hand, that his ankles became strong, he stood, watch this, that his feet became strong and his ankles became strong. And watch this, the text says, so he jumped up. And he started to walk, and he entered the temple with them, walking, leaping, and praising God. You know what I love about this? This man came for one thing, but he ended up getting something else. Okay, let me rephrase it. This man came for, came for one thing, but he ended up getting someone else. Yeah. He came for money, but he ended up getting healing. The healing that only comes from one name. The healing, and, and I love this. Okay, watch this. That's why I love talking about healing from, from, from Luke's perspective. Luke is the author of, of, of the book of Acts. Because I love this because Luke is a physician. Luke is a doctor. And as a doctor, Luke understands that the money that you're trying to give ain't what's going to help you. 
This is a doctor saying this. <laughs> now, now, okay, um, you tell me how many doctors ain't gonna want to take your take your money. Huh? And so um, um Luke says the healing that you need ain't gonna come financially, but it does come spiritually. And you have to accept the help that is available for you. John and Peter prayed, uh, 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 spoke into the man's life and says, in Jesus' name, you are healed. Stand up and walk. And the Bible says that his ankles and his feet became strong. And watch this. Not only was he walking, but he leaped and jumped all the way into the temple. Okay. Um, in other words, this man was excited about what just happened in his life. This man has just experienced something that he has never experienced before. This man has now um, ha had an encounter with Jesus. And because Jesus has changed his life, this man now goes into the temple not to sit, but to praise. This man has been healed to where he could no longer, he, at first he couldn't walk, he couldn't move. He was, he was depending on people to drop him off at the gate. But because Jesus has now came into his life, he has now entered into the temple where John and Peter was going to pray. He now entered into, into the temple with them to praise. Oh man, because what happens when Jesus blesses us, we forget all about the church and we put all our money and all our focus and everything else on everything else and everyone else and we forget to praise. Mm -hmm. This man did not forget what Jesus has done for him and the, the, the Bible says that he entered into the temple. Watch this, not to sit down, not, not to be silent, but to show people what God has done in his life. Can I tell you something? We shouldn't have to search deep within our soul to appreciate and to find out what God has done for us. That every single day of our lives, God has made something better for you. That every, say, every single day of our lives, we can sit there and say, you know what? God, you are the one who provided. God, you are the one who protected. God, you are the one who healed. God, you are the one who made things better. God, you are the one who restored. And so because of that, I have a reason. Or matter of fact, I, you, you deserve the praise. You, you deserve all the glory. You deserve all the honor. You deserve everything that I have to offer you. Why? Because you are the one who healed me. You are the one who made things better. This text teaches us that there is power in the name of Jesus. This text teaches us that healing comes from the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And this text teaches us that Jesus has done some great things for you in spite of what you may think. That when we come into his temple, that we should come with a praise on our lips and a praise in our heart because of what he has done for us. There's a song that we sing that says, he has done great things. But Satan only wants you, only wants you to see the negative. And so he's gonna, uh, and so he's gonna always present and put the negative in front of you. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, watch this, and sometimes the negative looks bigger than the positive. And when we make the negative look bigger than the positive, what that does is that magnifies the works of Satan. This man entered into the temple not thinking about money anymore, but only thinking about what God has done in his life. There is healing in the name of Jesus. And it only comes from the name of Jesus. Let me fast forward real quick. Because not only does healing come in the name of Jesus, and, and, and not only should we praise Jesus because he has healed us and because he has protected us, but go to Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4 says this in verse 12. Acts chapter 4, verse 12, says something that is so powerful and so rich that I don't want us to ever, ever forget this. Acts chapter 4, 
verse 12 says this. That there is salvation in no one else. Watch this. There is salvation in no one else. For there is no other name under the heaven given to people by which we must be saved. Listen to this. The same writer in Acts chapter 3 says that healing comes in the name of Jesus or comes from Jesus. The same writer goes in Acts chapter 4 and says not only does healing come from Jesus, but salvation comes from Jesus. Watch this. Let me give you some context of why uh, uh, Peter, um, um, who's actually preaching in this text, says this. Here's what's taking place. So in Acts chapter 3, the man who has went into the temple, the man who was lame, went into the temple praising God and, 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 and was worshiping God because of what took place, there was some jealousy that took place. There were some people there that says, we don't like this name of Jesus stuff. This name that you're preaching in uh, uh, goes against the Roman Empire, goes against the law, goes against what Moses has told us, uh, because Moses didn't teach us about this. He only told us about the Mosaic law. Well, I beg to differ. Moses did teach about Jesus. Yeah. Woo! And so now they're getting mad. And, and now it's getting to the point to where they even want to arrest. They want to arrest Peter and John. And Peter is looking at them and, and he begins to talk to them and he begins to tell them, listen, uh, uh, matter of fact, let me even go, let me uh, 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 backtrack. There were people who began to praise Peter and John because of this man now walking into the temple with them. And Peter looks at them and says, don't put your attention on me. It ain't nothing I did. I, I, you know what I wish? I really wish um, a lot of pastors would preach that text. Because Peter says, I ain't do nothing. It was all Jesus. <laughs> oh, this is going to get me in trouble right here, Gary. But that's okay. Because there's a lot of pastors that want to take credit and says, no, it's because I put my hands on you. That's the reason why you have been delivered. That's the reason why you have been set free. That's the reason why you are healed right now. And then they push you and make you fall. And don't let me go there. Okay? Um, 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 but can I tell you something? Peter says, I can't take none of this credit. It has nothing to do with me. It has to do with everything of the power of God. It has to do everything about Jesus. Jesus should get all the credit. And because he used the name Jesus, people get mad. And now they want to arrest him. And you know what Peter said? Peter says, listen, I, I, I don't matter of fact, he says this later in chapter 4. He says, um, um, man, is it better for me to obey you or to obey God? Like, you, you can lock me up if you want to, but I'm going to always obey God before I obey man. This is what Peter says. And, and, and so now we get into chapter 4, and, and, and uh, they, they've been arrested. And and and, uh, uh, Peter, and as they are being arrested, the, 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 the officers in the, in, the, in the Roman Empire is, is telling people, explain yourself, Peter. We've told you not to preach in this name before. Explain yourself why you believe that this Jesus guy has resurrected from the grave. And why do you believe that he is the only way to heaven? Peter begins to preach like he's never preached before. And Peter says in the text, he says, man, you know that Jesus that you killed? <laughs> you know that Jesus that you crucified? You know that Jesus that you spit on? You know that Jesus that you made fun of? You know that Jesus that you hung up on the cross? You know that Jesus that you put the thorns on his head, or the crowns on his head? You know that Jesus that you put the nails in his hands and the nails in his feet? You know that Jesus that you just humiliated? You know that Jesus that you made fun of? You know that Jesus that you had arrested? You know that Jesus that you uh, uh, told Judas to use and to betray? You know that Jesus that you did all these hurtful and horrible things to? That Jesus resurrected from the grave. That, that Jesus that you thought had died, that you thought you had killed him, can I tell you something? The Bible says that you didn't kill him, but he gave up his life. That, that same Jesus that you thought you had got the best of, can I tell you something? We have walked with him. 
That the same Jesus that you thought was dead has now resurrected and is now sitting at the right hand of the Father. That same Jesus that you thought his story was over has really just begun. That Jesus is the chief cornerstone. This is what he tells him. And then he sums it up. If this doesn't really make them mad, he says that there is no salvation in anyone else. That there is no name under heaven by which man can be saved. Well, why am I bringing up the salvation text when we started out a healing text? Because Peter makes it clear. He says, not only does healing happen with the name of Jesus, but salvation. Meaning, you, are, you and I cannot get to heaven unless we go through the Son. Unless we go through Jesus. Un un unless we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, then, then the Bible says that we cannot enter in. Matter of fact, Jesus himself says, no one gets, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one gets to the Father unless they go through me. And this is what Peter is trying to tell them as he's being arrested. He's letting them know, you can arrest me, that's, that's cool, that's okay. But there's evidence that God heals, look at this man walking, and there's evidence that God saves. Can I let you know that we should never doubt God because you are the evidence to let people know that God can work a miracle, that God can work make a way out of no way, that God is a God of love, that God is a God of grace and watch this, and God is a God of forgiveness. Can I tell you something that God has forgiven us for everything that we have done on yesterday and everything that we have done even on this, this morning, that when we repent of our sin, the text says that he is uh, just to forgive us for what we have done. And only that comes a relationship with Christ Jesus. Yeah. There's salvation in his name. That our works cannot save, okay, as, as we're closing. I, uh, in my Bible class that I teach here at school, my freshmen, I'm teaching them um, uh, world religions, and so we've been teaching about uh, uh, what Muslims believe, we are uh, comparing it to Christianity. We've been teaching about what people who practice uh, people who practice Buddhism that means worship Buddha, um, what they believe, and, and the difference between them and Christianity. Uh, Judaism, uh, uh, Hinduism, people who practice uh, uh, Hindu, so the Hindus and things of that nature. But I've also, but now I begin to teach on this organization that I think we all know because you probably have ran into them, or probably they knocked on your door when you were little, and your parents told them, "Don't answer that door. That's Jehovah's Witness." Right? You know how your parents will tell you to lie? <laughs> yeah! Your parents tell you to lie, and then try to take you to Sunday school. Like, they don't, they don't match, right? Don't open that door, don't open that door. Well, I've been teaching about Jehovah's Witness, and, and the difference between Christianity and Jehovah's Witness simply deals with Jesus. They don't believe that Jesus was who he said he was. They don't view him the way that we, the way that we view Jesus. And they also teach that only 144,000 people total will make it into heaven. Only 144,000 people will make it into heaven according to their doctrine, according to their teaching. So I'm like, okay, what if I decide on today I want to be a Jehovah's Witness? Is heaven already full? Can I not get in? The people who have died before, or they sitting at the gate like waiting, like let me in, let me in. And they say, oh, we've already reached capacity. <laughs> and they believe that the only way that they can get to heaven is by going door to door, knocking on people's houses, teaching them about Jehovah's Witness. They say that you have to do a certain amount of works and amount of activities in order for you to get to heaven. And our Bible says that our works to God is like filthy rags. It ain't good enough. That's why our scripture teaches us the way we get to heaven is to accept and believe in Jesus. Because, because okay, I shared this with my Bible class and this is it. And, and, and this rocked their world on this. And I'm going to say this, and I don't want you to get disgusted because I'm about to go get graphic real quick. Here's what the scripture says about our works. If we think we can work our way into heaven. The Bible says that we cannot work our way into heaven. 
Because the book of Isaiah, chapter 64, I believe, verse 6, says this. That we are like that person who, are, who is unclean. And our works that we're thinking that we're doing for God is like filthy rags to him. So let me give you a visual of what that looks like. Okay, please excuse me, but I'm about to go here. Because it, according to the Greek, the Bible is written in three languages, Greek, Hebrew, and Aramaic. Okay? And here's what it means in the Greek and Hebrew. When the text makes reference to filthy rags, it's like you have gotten a clean white rag, it's spotless, right? And you go outside, you put dirt and mud all on it and everything, so now it's dirty and, and muddy. Would you wipe your face with that? You probably wouldn't. Can I tell you something? That ain't even what the scripture's talking about. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you what filthy rags simply mean. I'm about to go here. That same clean, pure, white rag, you just either bought it off the shelf or you just washed it so it's spotless. It's clean. Imagine a woman, a young lady, <laughs> Sorry, baby, but I got I got to explain. At that time of the month, see on on, on, on the site, right? Imagine you have taken and so imagine the bodily fluids that comes with that. Okay, now you take that same rag, white rag, and you use that rag to wipe all the bodily fluids that come from the lady. This is what the scripture is talking about. And you use that white rag. Would you use that same white rag to wipe your face? To make you clean? Woo! <laughs> this is what the scripture is making reference to. He says, the works that you think you're doing, your door to door, knocking on the door, thinking that that's what's going to get you into heaven. Can I tell you something? It's dirty. It ain't clean enough. Yeah. Without Jesus Christ, our works mean nothing. Without Jesus, our works mean nothing. And that's why Jesus says, uh, 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 I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the way that you can get to heaven. Your works will never be good enough unless I'm involved in it. Woo! That, 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 it, it ain't about your works, it's about your heart. And so that's why I'm very careful and I'm very cautious when I see people use this statement, you know what, I'm about to lose my salvation. No, 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 you're not. Mm -mm. No, you're not. Because the scripture teaches us it's our faith alone in Christ alone. Amen. And Jesus says in scripture that once you give your life to me, you don't have to bathe again. You're already saved. The only thing you need to do is wash your feet because you've been stepping in filth. You've been stepping in sin. And if you allow me to wash your feet and wash your, uh, uh, that, that's what uh, is going to wash the dirt off of your feet. Yes. And he says the scripture that I have you in my hand. And once I have you in my hand, there's no one that can take you out of it. We all fall short. We all mess up. We all are some sinful people. Can I be honest with you? We all are, are, are just some imperfect people. There, there's nothing perfect about us. We all make God look at us sometimes like, boy, what is wrong with you? He, he always look at us like that sometimes. And, that, and that's so, uh, uh, but, but what we need to understand is that he is a forgiving God. And when we confess our sins to, uh, to him, he forgives us. Healing comes from Jesus. Watch this. Eternal healing comes from Jesus. And salvation comes from Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. Because there's something about this man named Jesus. And that there is no one like him. And so I pray today that for those who have not turned to Jesus for whatever problems or whatever your concerns may be, the Bible says this in Scripture, cast all your cares upon him. That means give it to him. Yes. And let him work him out. Let's pray. Father, I thank you and I love you. I thank you for your grace. I thank you for your mercy. I thank you for teaching us that healing comes from Jesus, salvation comes from Jesus. There's something about this man named Jesus. And that's why his name causes controversy. That's why people get upset with his name. That, that's, that's why when you when you work in, uh, work in public places or go to public places, they don't want you to say the name Jesus. or, or, or They don't mind you using the, 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 the word God, but when you throw Jesus in there, that means something. And so it causes controversy. 
Because the Bible says that demons tremble at the name of Jesus. People fear the name of Jesus because Jesus is the one that truly changes things. We've seen him work in the lame man's life. But more importantly, can I tell you something? We've seen him work in our lives. When you sit back and look about and look at what God has really done for you and where he has brought you from, you can't help but to say, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> God, you brought us from a mighty long way. You brought us out of darkness into your marvelous light. And God, you know that we're not perfect. And that's why we appreciate your grace that much more. Because we fall short daily. But we know that you are forgiving God. Father, I pray for right now for those who are here and those who are watching. That if we need to be convicted, convict us. Where we need to be encouraged, encourage us. Where we need to be lifted, uh, lift us up, Father God, to where we truly see you. Open the eyes of our heart to where we truly see your glory. We love you and we praise you. For those who need you right now, be the God that, that, that they need right now. God who heals, provides, comforts, protects, counsels, everything, Father God. You are a way maker. You are a good, good Father. How great is our God? We can sing of your love forever. That, forever. That's how great your love is. We love you and we praise you. It's in Jesus' precious name we pray. And all God's people say, amen. Let's give Jesus a hand clap. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. Thank you for worshiping God with us on today. And um, we pray that you heard the word of God and that um, you know today, um, if you have never known it before, that all you have to do is believe upon Jesus. Amen. There's nothing else required. It's just simply believing that he died on the cross for your sins. He raised from the dead and you will be saved. That is scripture. So all you have to do is believe. So do not be misled in thinking that you have to do all these other things. Okay, God will do the work on the inside once you believe. Um, if uh, I, I want to say it's the first week of March um, this past. So if we have any March birthdays, um, stand up. We're going to make hey, you March. Yeah. <laughs> And if you have a birthday um, and you're online today, just let us know in the chat. We wish you a happy, happy birthday. Um, if you are in need um, or you have questions or you want to reach out, uh, you can do so at fullofaithbiblechurch at gmail.com. Um, and then if you would like to give, you can take care of that at fullofaithbiblechurch.org. Under the Together We Build, Together We Grow portion of the web page. Um, the uh, community that we have been helping um, because their water was off. It, I think it ended up being off for over 12 days, um, but they did finally get water restored, so we praise God for that. Yes. Um, and we will finish taking the donations that we received um, last week as well um, to the apartment complex. Uh, of course, the kids go on spring break, so we appreciate your giving um, so that we can um, help in the community. Listen, and, and man, continue to um, um, uh, operate in faith. Uh, continue to trust God, continue to love God, continue to love people. Um, man, we, we're, we're just so appreciative of everything that God is doing, not only in our lives, but in, in, in uh, the ministry of FFPC. We love you. We love you all. Um, and we appreciate you all. All right. Um, we're saying our benediction scripture. We are speaking this into your life. We, we pray to speak this into our lives as well. Here we go. One, two, three. May, May the, the Lord, Lord bless, bless you and, and keep you. you. May, may the, the Lord, Lord smile down, down on you and show you his kindness. And may, may the Lord answer your prayers and give you peace. And Lord, this is our prayer for your people. We give you the glory. It's in Jesus' precious name we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Here we go. Ready? Break. <laughs> Uh, you want the camera? Good job. Oh, <laughs> Please don't make me look. He's not. Yeah. No.